Hi, welcome back to the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. I'm Jesus Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you a great way to create beautiful color grades in Photoshop. We will work on two projects where we will apply a color grade to a photo using the selective color adjustment layer. We will start by applying a blue cold color grade to this photo. And we will then move on to a second example where you will learn to apply a warm tone color grade. You will also learn a ton of helpful tips and tricks along the way, such as creating a solar flare with a grading film. The goal of this tutorial is to show you how you can apply any color grade that you want with the selective color adjustment layer. We will not discuss color theory or how color affects the story that your image conveys in this tutorial. But if you would like to find out more about those topics, then check out my video on cinematic color grading, where I talk about those topics in depth and I even discuss several movie stills and the color grades that they use and how it affects their story. You can check out that video after this one. I'll place a link right below in the description for you. And before we get started, I just want to ask you to please click on that like button if at some point during this tutorial you see a technique that is useful to you and your workflow. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop Training Channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. If you want to follow along with this image, I'm going to place a link right below in the description where you can download a free watermark version from Adobe Stock, which is where I got this image from. Okay, let's get started. In this first example, I'm going to show you how to create a cooler version of the color grade. And I'm going to start by using the selective color adjustment layer. The selective color adjustment layer allows you to select a color or a tone and add and subtract colors. And I know that seems a little weird, but I'll explain how that works in a moment. One really important thing to keep in mind when working with the selective color adjustment layer is what is the opposite color of each color. With black, it's really simple. The opposite of black is white. But what about yellow, magenta, and cyan? If you don't know, you can turn on the color balance adjustment layer and I think that Photoshop does a really good job in this adjustment layer in displaying the relationship between each color. The opposite of cyan is red. The opposite of magenta is green. The opposite of yellow is blue. Unfortunately, with the adjustment layer that we're working with, we don't have that great visual representation on the sliders. But the same is true. The opposite of cyan is red. The opposite of magenta is green. And the opposite of yellow is blue. So if you forget, just turn on the color balance adjustment layer and look at this wonderful display that shows you the relationship between each color. So for the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to work with the selective color adjustment layer. What I'm going to do first is click on the drop down and select the color, or in this case, the tone that we're going to adjust. I'm going to adjust the blacks. Those are the darkest colors in the image, and I can add or subtract colors. If I want to create a cold, cool image, then I'm going to add cool colors, in this case, cyan. So I can increase the cyan and notice how I'm adding cyan to the darker colors of the image. I could also do the same thing with the yellow. Remember, the opposite of yellow is blue. So instead of adding yellow, if I subtract yellow, I get blue. See that? See, if I just go all the way to the left, I get this really, really bright blue that really doesn't look any good. But if I fine tune it, I can get a nice balance between the cyan and blue. And obviously it's up to you as to how you fine tune the image. This is all very subjective. So go with whatever looks good to your eye and your image. You don't necessarily have to use the same values or even the same sliders that I use, but you probably will start with the blacks. So at this point, the blacks, the darker colors in the image are not necessarily black, which is why they're looking so washed out. So I can increase the blacks to just make them darker, therefore bringing more contrast into the image. Watch what happens if I go all the way. See how the darker colors are now darker? That's why the image looks so dark. But if I go all the way to the left, the darker colors are now white, creating this effect you see here. And I don't want that, of course, so I'm going to go to about 10% or so. And that creates that effect you see there. That's the before and the after. Notice how quickly we were able to apply this color grade just by targeting the blacks in the image and applying cool colors. And I can continue. I can go into the neutrals and do the same thing. I can reduce the yellows to add a little bit of blue, maybe not so much, and increase the cyans as well. In this case, I really don't want to fine tune the neutrals too much. 
I think that we did a really good job with the blacks that we'll just keep working with that. And then in some cases, you might need to adjust the whites. In this case, they probably won't make much of a difference if I increase the cyan all the way to 100%. You'll notice that I'm targeting the highlights on his face and the highlights on the motorcycle. In this case, it's not necessary to adjust the whites. So I'll leave all the sliders at their default setting. So that's before and after. Again, everything is subjective, so you might be happy with the look you have now. In this case, I don't necessarily like the blue on the shadows of his face, so I'm gonna press the Z key on the keyboard to zoom in, and you can see what I'm talking about. See the before and the after? We added a lot of blue to his face, and I don't necessarily like that. So what I'll do in this case is simply select the brush tool and click on the selective color layer mask thumbnail make sure that your foreground color is set to black then paint on the layer mask to reveal the original skin tones on a layer mask white reveals and black conceals so i'm painting with black therefore concealing the effect i'll quickly mask these areas out which will allow me to adjust the skin tones independently from the selective color adjustment layer i'm going fairly quickly here but in your image do take your time it's not necessary for me to get a perfect mask for this tutorial, but the mask will be good enough and you will get the idea. So once you have the mask, you can double click on the hand tool to fit it to screen. And actually, I'll also paint over his hands since they're also part of his skin, obviously. And I'll quickly paint through those. I just don't like those dark blues on the shadows of his hands but that's just a personal preference. You might actually like that for your image and that's okay. And I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And you can see that we masked out the effect on his skin. You can duplicate the layer by clicking and dragging it into the new layer icon. Then I'll rename the bottom layer to color tone. In the top layer, I'll call skin because it's controlling his skin. Currently, both layer masks are targeting everything but the skin. But we want the layer on top to only target the skin and nothing else. We can make this happen very easily by first clicking on the layer mask thumbnail to activate it. Then in the properties panel, you will see the invert button. This button allows us to invert the layer mask to select the opposite of what it's currently selecting. So it will select the skin tones and nothing else. I'll click on the adjustment layer thumbnail and then click on reset to reset the adjustment layer. And then I can continue working with this layer. For example, I can go into the blacks and adjust the brightness of the skin tones. If I make them darker, I give them more contrast, which I think it needs. And I can go into the reds where most of the skin tones are found, no matter what the ethnicity is. And maybe add just a tad bit of cyan, reduce the yellow just a tiny bit, add a bit of magenta to the skin, which gives it a nice effect. And this is before and after. And I think that looks much, much better. What I'm going to do now is create a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to change the blending mode to luminosity. But before I do that, I want to show you one thing. If you create a really extreme adjustment like this one, you'll see that with a curves adjustment layer, you not only affect luminosity, but you also affect the saturation of the image. See how the colors are very saturated on his shirt? But if you change the blending mode to luminosity, notice now that the colors are not as saturated. So I'm going to use the curves adjustment layer with the luminosity blending mode to not affect the saturation of the image. I'm going to click on the reset icon to reset the curves adjustment. And I'm going to click on the curve to create a point and drag down to darken the image. Then I'm going to paint directly on the layer mask thumbnail with the brush tool, obviously, and with black to hide the effect. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard. Another way in which you can reduce the size of your brush is by holding Alt option on the Mac and right clicking and dragging left and right to increase the size of the brush and up and down to adjust the smoothness of that brush. So in this case, I want a fairly smooth brush and the brush about that big. And I'm just going to paint where I want to conceal that effect 
What I'm doing here is bringing more attention into the subject by making the background darker. And then I can reduce the opacity accordingly. Just to get a much more interesting effect. And again, just like everything else, everything is subjective. So you can decide how you want to mask out that darkening effect. So that's before and after. And that still might be a little too dark, so I'll bring down the opacity to 50%. Before and after. Then I'm going to rename the Curves Adjustment layer, and I'll just call it Darkening. I like having all my layers named so that I know what they control. With the top layer selected, I'm going to hold Shift, click on the bottom layer, the one labeled Color Tone, and press Control G, Command G in the Mac, to put that into a group, and I'll call this group Cooling effect. So we made a cooling effect just using those adjustment layers. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, there's one other change that I want to do that I really didn't think about until just now. So we'll see how that works. With a hue and saturation adjustment layer selected, I want to change some of these reds because the image is really blue and blue contrasts better with orange. So if we make these reds orange, because blue and orange are complementary colors, as you've seen in my cinematic color grading tutorial. There's a link down below in the description if you want to know what I'm talking about. But I think that it would look much better if his shirt had orange instead of red. So we'll see if it works. I'm going to click on this icon here and then click on one of the reds and drag. See that? See when I'm clicking and dragging, I'm changing the saturation. See that? But if I click and drag while holding control, that's command the Mac. I'm changing the hue so I can push the hue to the oranges. And I know I'm affecting other parts of the image like his skin, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that right now. I just want to make sure I get the right orange there, like that one there, and then click and drag without holding control and click to the left to reduce the saturation of that orange just a little bit. I think I went too far, so I'll go back up somewhere around there. So that's before and after. Next, I'll select the Hue and Saturation Layer Mask Thumbnail, and I'll call the layer Shirt so that I know it's affecting the shirt. I'm going to press the Invert button on the Properties panel with that layer thumbnail selected, and it turns it black, of course, so it hides the effect. White reveals, black conceals, so the entire layer mask is black, so everything is hidden. Now with white as my foreground color, I can paint directly over the shirt, and again, I'm not going to take the time to do a perfect mask, but you'll get the idea. And so now I'm painting directly over the shirt, revealing the orange color that we applied with the hue and saturation adjustment layer. So that's before and after. It's a subtle adjustment, but I think it works. I think it looks much better with orange, and we can always come back into the hue and saturation adjustment layer go back into the reds because that's what we adjusted with the direct selection tool there. And maybe I can increase the saturation. I think it might actually look better with more saturation. So before and after, I can also adjust the hue to maybe change it to a different shade of orange, maybe more in the yellows. And you can keep fine tuning it as much as you want. Also, one thing I'm noticing is that in these areas, I'm not really targeting the reds. And that's because the target is right here, right on the red, not the darker shades of red. So I'm going to click and drag this to expand it and select more reds. And I think I will be able to get some of the reds that I missed right over here. And I think that actually selected those. And I'm also going to come back and make sure that I paint it over every area that has red over the shirt. And you can, of course, keep fine tuning the mask and the colors as much as you like. So that's before and after. So that was the cooling effect. Now let me show you a warming effect using the same technique. I'm going to click on the eye icon to disable the group. Then I'm going to click on the background and press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate it. And I'm just going to drag that into the cooling group effect and I'll drag it all the way to the bottom of the group. And you know what? I actually did that the long way. There's actually a faster way. Let me show you what that is. I'm just going to delete this layer. And I'm going to press Control J, Command J, and the Mac to duplicate that layer. And as you just saw, if I simply click and drag something into a group, it's going to place it on the very top of the group. 
But if I duplicate the layer, Control J, Command J on the Mac, and hold Shift and drag it into the group, it's going to place that layer at the bottom of the layer stack. So that's the way I should have done it, just a little faster. And that only works on Photoshop CC. In older versions of Photoshop, if I'm not mistaken, by default, the layer goes to the bottom of the layer stack when you drag it into a group. But anyway, the reason that I'm doing this is so that we can compare with the second example, the warming example. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to make this image look warmer. So I'm going to create a selective color adjustment layer. I'm going to go back into the blacks. And this time I'm going to add yellow to make the image warmer and reduce the cyan to bring in some red, like so. And I'll drag the blacks to the right to bring in some contrast. Then I'll go into the neutrals and I'll do the same thing, add red, maybe add a little bit more yellow this time. And in the whites, I'll do the same. I'll reduce the cyan and I'll add yellow, like so. So the image obviously is looking much warmer. I think that we need a bright highlight on the right hand side just to make it seem like there's maybe a window or a light source coming in through the right. And one of the ways in which you can create that effect is by creating a gradient fill under style. Make sure that you have radio selected and the style that you're going to use is the second one here, the one that goes from foreground color to transparent to make sure that you have the right gradient. Double click on the gradient and in the gradient editor, just make sure that this opacity stop is set to 0% and location at 100%. Click on the color stop to the left and set it to white. That will be the inner color. Then click on the color stop on the right and set it to yellow. That will be the outer color. Press OK. Press OK once more and then we can adjust the scale of that highlight. And you can click and drag it and place it anywhere. I'm going to place it on the right and I'll move the gradient fill window to the left so that we can see what we're doing. Then I can adjust the intensity of the glow by adjusting the scale. Maybe push it out of the canvas more and then press OK. What I'm going to do now is change the blending mode to color dodge and you can reduce the opacity if you like. But I find that with color dodge fill works better. Color dodge is one of those blending modes where fill and opacity work differently. If you want to find out what blending modes work differently when you adjust fill compared to opacity, then check out my video, The 8 Special Blending Modes. I'll place a link right below in the description. But anyway, I'm going to double click on the gradient fill layer thumbnail to bring up the gradient fill window and I'll click and drag the glow in a bit more. I'll also increase the scale to make it larger. I should have changed the blending mode first and then adjusted the scale. And I'll drag it to the outside of the canvas again and press OK. And I can adjust the fill and bring that down accordingly. So that's before and after. And this is creating this warming effect on the right hand side as if we had a bright window where a lot of light is coming through. And it's affecting obviously our model. And just like with everything else, you can keep fine tuning it until it looks good to your eye. One thing that I want to do in this case is flatten the image more so that there's less contrast. And one of the ways in which I can do that is by creating a levels adjustment layer and moving the black point to the right so that the darkest pixel is brighter, thus flattening the image. The problem is that if we go all the way to the right, you'll notice that the image is actually pretty white and it's not necessarily that yellow color that we want. And that's because we placed the levels adjustment layer at the very top. So I'm going to drag it down below the selective color adjustment layer and watch what happens. See how now we have that yellow effect on this flat image. So remember, layer stack order matters. What I'm going to do now is drag the black point to the left and fine tune it to a position where I'm happy with the flattening effect. I'll quickly rename my layers. I'll name the gradient fill flare. The second selective color layer is the color grade. And this levels adjustment layer is the wash out effect and I can put those into a group. So click on the top layer, hold shift and click on the bottom layer and press control G command G on the Mac. I actually can't make this into a group because there's a lock on it. The best way to remove the background lock is simply by clicking on it. In older versions of Photoshop before Photoshop CC, you will have to hold alt and click on that lock. But anyway, 
I'll do that again. I'll select all the layers and press Ctrl G, Command G on the Mac. And I'll call this one warming effect. And you can see the two color grades that we came up with by using the same selective color adjustment layer. Let me know in the comments below which of these two color grades you prefer and why, or what colors you would have used for the color grade. Remember, if this is your first time at the Photoshop Training Channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in the next tutorial.